D.L. Rogers. I'm a uh, professor of logistics and supply chain management at the W.P. Carey School of Business at Arizona State University. And uh, we have written a book, uh, Supply Chain Financing, which uh, came out this year and was originally uh, a CAPS research report. I'm Rudy Leuchner. I'm a professor of uh, supply chain management at Rutgers Business School. And uh, I was lucky to be a co-author with these two gentlemen. Hi, I'm Tom Choi, Professor of Supply Chain Management at W. Carey School of Business at Arizona State University. So the idea behind what we're writing about supply chain financing is using your supply chain to fund your organization, or in some cases, vice versa, where you use your financial strength to help maybe your suppliers get help. It, it's really practice that's been sort of you know done informally for a while, but now there's some um, actual mechanisms um, that have developed over the last few years to, to help you do that. And when you look at the supply chain, there are also three primary flows, the flow of products, the flow of information, and the flow of money. And the flow of money has been the one that has been not studied as uh, as closely as the other two for sure. The way that we measure firms is based on their financial strength within the four walls of the company. But truthfully today, no firm is really by themselves. You use a whole large network of suppliers and you probably also have a, a network of customers. And what firms have learned how to do is transfer some of the, 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 the things that maybe would not would make their financial statements not look as good upstream usually sometimes it can be downstream but usually it's upstream in the in the supply network and and transfer some of those things uh, out of the firm so that when they're measured by wall street and and uh, analysts and you know they look pretty good uh but but basically they're they've moved some of the messy parts uh, out outside the four walls company. I mean, the fact that, you know, companies need cash, that hasn't changed, right? But what has changed, I, I think I go back to this one article um, I read from New York Times, you know, pointing out Apple, that, you know, we used to think companies play uh, the game of profit maximization, but that article contended that the Apple doesn't play profit maximization game you know, anymore. Apple plays the cash flow game. So basically, they get their money from the consumers like us right away, and then they, they extend the payment terms out as far as they can, and then they try to offload the assets they need onto their suppliers. I mean, you know, what a, what a <laughs> concept, right? <laughs> you can't lose, really. You're absolutely right, Tom. It's really brilliant. We calculated Apple's days of inventory. How, many, how much inventory does Apple have? throughout the whole world and in in march of uh, 2020 they had about 10 days worth of inventory globally well you know that apple has much more inventory than that there's no way they only have less than two weeks of inventory what they've done is they've had their suppliers own that as long as possible transfer it to them right when they need it and then pay for it 90 or 120 days later. So basically they're operating to some extent off the supplier's dime and, uh, and using uh, the, the suppliers to improve their working capital, as Tom said, uh, dramatically improve their cash flow. And they're really using their supply chain to facilitate this cash flow game, as Tom said. The, the other thing that we're saying in the book uh, is that supply chain financing does make the supply chain healthier financially. And by using a lot of the tools that we describe, you can make sure that the, the risk of some of your suppliers going out of business or being in financial trouble is diminished because there's enough liquidity to support everybody. One of the things that's uh, going on right now is, especially right now, there's probably not enough liquidity in the economy. 
partly because demand has dried up, supply has dried up, and um, people are just uh, out of work in general. So during an economic crisis, finding ways to increase liquidity is much more important than, and, and it's important even in good times. So what, one of the things that broke the economy back in 2009 was that banks stopped lending and nobody could get access to capital. So some of what we, we are trying to describe is ways to avoid these things. So if you look at uh, you know, the, the background of procurement managers these days, a lot of them have come through engineering, marketing, human resource, and so forth. And, uh, and many of them may lack some, you know, a financial uh, uh, background. And uh, the book is really written primarily for those folks uh, that are practicing procurement, yet they would like to understand more about how the money moves, basically based on the decisions they make, right? They make sourcing decisions. And they make you know decisions on, on, on supplier terms and and so on and so forth. So we just wanted to help them understand to get a, a better overall picture of what's going on in, in supply chain beyond just exchanging materials and services, goods and services, and information and how the money flows, as as Rudy pointed out earlier. We try to make this book very accessible. To, to anyone uh, coming from any background. A lot of uh, supply chain finance books kind of looked at the tools primarily. And what we did was really explain the whole structure and the idea that you use your supply base to actually help fund your organization and, and sort of the ideas around that as opposed to just focusing on on specific tools. We, we tried to lay it out um, in a more holistic manner. Supply chain management has typically looked at how to source, to make, and to deliver. And then we are adding one more to that, how to fund. 